Hi everyone, this is Vanessa. Welcome back to ASEAN News. Senior Chinese diplomat willing to promote regional global peace with Singapore and other ASEAN countries. Singaporean Prime Minister Li Xiong meets with Yang Jiechi, a member of the political bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee at the Istana, official residence office of the President of Singapore. At the meeting, the Chinese willing to join hands with Singapore and other member states of the ASEAN to promote regional as well as global peace, stability, development and prosperity. China stands ready to work with Singapore to strengthen what they have achieved in the fight against the COVID-19 and keeping the industrial and supply chains stable and smooth. Li Xiong for his part, emphasized that the COVID-19 pandemic requires more than ever that countries work together and communicate with each other rationally. The achievements that the two countries have scored in their relations are beyond the imaginations when the ties were forged 30 years ago. Ecuador says some Chinese vessels near Galapagos have cut communication systems. Ecuador's armed forces says that dozens of vessels that form part of mostly Chinese fishing fleet operating near the Galapagos Island are turned off traffic systems to prevent monitoring of their activities. Navy Commander Darwin Jaring tells reporters around 325 ships still fishing in the waters. This left terminal con exactitud las contravenciones que se realiza de la pesca. To determine with accuracy the contradictions that make in terms of the fishing industry at sea, may I use an example, the fact satellite systems are being turning off, so it's obvious we will not be able to determine their location, where they are, who they are, or where they came from. Ecuador says the fleet has not entered its territory waters, but environmentalists say this type of fishing allows vessels to take advantage of the abundant marine wildlife. Jorin says turning off satellite equipment violates rules created by the regional fisheries management organizations, a group of international agencies that promote. Hasta el momento no ha existido ninguna violación. So far, there has been no territorial violation. No fishing vessels have entered the exclusive economic area. There are no monitoring activities. Example, knowing where they are with precisions and how the naval force maintaining their vessels in the area, in spite the great limitations have due to their prolonged presence and autonomy. La naval mantiene sus unidades a pesar de las graves limitaciones que se tiene por la permanencia y la autonomía. China has promised a zero-tolerance policy toward illegal fishing and authorized the Indian country to supervise the vessel. It also proposed a fishing moratorium in the area near the Galapagos, though the fleets usually leave the area before the period begins. Indonesia adopts novel scare tactic to fight COVID-19. The morbid site is the latest tactic used by the government of the Indonesia capital, to spread awareness of deadly virus that has infected over 140,000 and claimed over 6,000 lives in Southeast Asia's largest economy. This coffin is not here to scare people but serve as a reminder that COVID-19 is dangerous and it is up to us, the people. We need to respect and recognize the fact that COVID-19 is dangerous. With a coffin set up here, I think it's very effective. COVID is very Dengan adanya peti yang dipasang seperti itu, sangat efektif. With more than 30,000 cases reported, Jakarta is epicenter of Indonesia's coronavirus outbreak. Kasus ini semakin hari semakin meningkat, ya. Sementara sosialisasi-sosialisasi mengenai COVID juga cukup banyak. Baik. Number of infections are increasing day by day. At the moment, we have been doing a lot of education on coronavirus on social media, on the news as well, but people still ignore the health protocols. Maybe the action, the coffin display, taken by the leadership is a bit extreme, but this is how we hope to raise awareness of COVID-19 among the people. Bahwa COVID ini ada. He adds that he hopes the measure will help to raise awareness and change people's behavior. Pemasangan yang dilakukan peti mati tadi, masyarakat itu sadar. Ya. Sadar sehingga mereka nanti ada perubahan perilaku ya, terhadap keseharian mereka. Setting up the coffin helps people to stay alert of the situation so that they can change their behavior and follow the health protocols like using masks, washing hands and keeping a safe distance as we thought. Uh, seperti yang disosialisasikan sebelumnya, ya, 3M itu. 
Social stigma is also undermining Indonesian authorities' efforts to stop the virus spread. As locals are refusing to be screened, some even forcibly retrieving the bodies of suspected coronavirus victims from hospitals so they can be buried according to religious rituals rather than following health protocols. It helps people to be aware that COVID-19 is not for fun. The consequence could be that. Local media reports the Jakarta government plans to continue rolling out the scheme in different parts of the city until the end of the pandemic. Japan expert team says working to minimize all spills impact on Mauritius' environment. Speaking to journalists through an online news conference, a Japanese disaster relief expert team sent to help clean up a massive oil spill of the coast of Mauritius, that there is almost no oil floating at sea, that their next step is to clean up the beaches and minimize the spill's damage to the local environment as much as possible. There is almost no oil floating at sea. The next step is to clean the beaches and minimize the impact of the environment as much as possible. Spilling about 1,000 tons of fuel oil and endangering coral fish and other marine life in what some scientists are calls the country's worst ecological disaster. Authorities say the ship has broken apart, fearing more oil spill, but the Japanese expert says that oil leak from the split ship is minimal. Japan announces to send another team of seven experts to Mauritius to support and initiate on-site environment assistance activities. The team departs from Japan and will reach Mauritius the next day. France, the United Nations and India are also sent teams to offer aid in the oil spill cleanup. South Korean lawmaker says North Korean leader's sister is de facto second in command. South Korea's intelligence agency believes that Kim Yo-jong, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, is serving as his de facto second in command, but has not necessarily been designated as his successor. Kim Yo-jong runs the regime with mandated authority from Kim Jong-un, but has not necessarily been designated as Kim Jong-un's successor. Believed to be in her early 30s, Kim Yo-jong is the leader's only close relative with a public role in politics, recently spearheading a new tougher campaign to put pressure on South Korea. Ha Tae-kung, an opposition party lawmaker on Parliament's Intelligence Committee, tells to Reuters that Kim Yo-jong was helping to run the regime with mandated authority from her brother. Analyst says Kim Yo-jong won fame ahead of her brother's 2019 summit with U.S. President Donald Trump in Vietnam, while her prominence in the campaign against South Korea highlighted a substantive policy role that goes beyond merely Kim's assistant. Philippines promised to refresh its coronavirus approach as capital exits strict lockdown. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte lifts the strict coronavirus lockdown in and around the capital Manila. The government promises refreshers approach to fighting of COVID-19 that includes intensified testing. General Community Quarantine, NCR, Bulacan, Cavite, Laguna Rizal, Rabaisia, Matangas, Quezon, Iloilo City, Cebu City. We want to ensure the safety of our people, you know. However, uh, some sectors in our economy, especially the MSMEs, are barely surviving. Duterte in a televised address says, need to reopen the economy with small and medium enterprises barely surviving. The only salvation available to humankind at this time of our life is uh, if you are stricken with a virus, the answer is always vaccine. The Philippines, which before the pandemic, was one of the Asia's fastest growing economies. The Philippines, which has had the most number of coronavirus cases in Southeast Asia. South Korea accuses religious sect leader as COVID-19 cases surge. 
South Korea accuses the leader of a religious sect of violating self-isolation rules and obstructing investigations into the country's biggest outbreak of new coronavirus. The Seoul city will file a complaint against Reverend Jung Kwon Hoon and staff of the Southern Jail Church in Songbuk province for violating the Infectious Disease Prevention Act. According to the Health Ministry, South Korea reports new cases more than double. The 103 report most of the new infectious find in around Seoul. There are 267 newly confirmed cases from local communities and 237 of them are from Seoul and Gyeonggi province which is rapidly increasing. Seoul City also says it will file a complaint against Reverend Jung Kwang Hoon and staff of the Sarang Jail Church after the number of cases connected to his charge total of 249 and raised the specter of another large outbreak linked to a religious group. The recent surge in COVID-19 cases prompted authorities to reimpose tighter social distancing curbs in the Seoul metropolitan area. The strong quake strikes off Sumatra Island of Indonesia no tsunami risk. A magnitude 6.8 earthquake struck off Indonesia's Sumatra Island with strong tremors filled in the area though seismology agency says there is no risk of a tsunami and there is no immediate reports of casualties or damage. Indonesia's meteorology, climatology and geophysical agency says the quake filled in the cities in the area including Bengkulu, which is the nearest to the epicenter and Padang. Indonesia sits on the Pacific's seismically active ring of fire and has suffered deadly earthquakes and tsunamis in the past. Thailand high school students demand freedom of expression. Hundreds of high school students rally in front of the education ministry in Bangkok, demanding more freedom in schools from the government after a string of demonstrations around the country. The students' protesters say they are demonstrating against the restrictive nature of Thailand education culture, which have strict rules on uniform, personal appearances, and regimental practices that they say are repressive to their freedom of expression. I'm here to show that I have brains. I can think on my own. I was not influenced or just go with what adults tell me. We can make our own decision and we can find information on our own. We grow up with information around us. We know how to analyze things. We did not grow up believing stories. We are here today to let them know. Today we will no longer tolerate what's not right. We want things to be fixed. The high school students are calling for the ousting of the education minister Natapol Tepsuan, who came out to greet the protesters and promised them that the government will hear them out. Due to the Thai school sculpture, the uniforms is one of the reasons that we raised the three-finger salute. We were barred from expression ourselves just because the word youth, which they used to bind us in a box. Thailand Education Minister Natapol Tepsuang also appears at the demonstration and sat down to talk with some of the students. <laughs> Firstly, I promise that there will be no harassment in schools. I will never let any students get harassed. <laughs> If people think I did not do a good job, I'm ready to consider myself, but I'm confident that the work I'm doing is for the foundation of Thai education system, for everyone. I want you all students to take note of this and it's totally fine to express any kind of symbols. You can express it in any form as long as it remains in the boundaries, not aggressive. You're not poking my eyes with the three fingers. The three fingers have different meanings to many groups. For me, it means the country, monarchy and the king. Therefore, the way we think can be fair as well. Apart from the political demands, some peoples demonstrate against a school system which emphasizes obedience and tradition from lining up daily for the national anthem to strict rules on uniforms, haircuts and behavior. Vietnam uses permit system at food markets to curb COVID-19 spread. Vietnam's Danang rolls out a permit system to enter food markets in a bid to encourage residents to shop. Each household will be given five permits to cover a 15-day period as part of a new measures to fight against a new coronavirus outbreak. These permits ensure that you can only enter a market on a given day. 
Therefore, people will have a very clear idea of what they want to buy on that day. Having a shopping list will drastically reduce contact between buyers and sellers. Residents can use either blue or pink permits, allowing them to enter food markets on separate days. The government hopes the move will limit transmission of the virus between shoppers and sellers. The majority of recent coronavirus cases in Da Nang, home to 1.1 million people, where a citywide lockdown was extended. Vietnam reports 17 new coronavirus infections. And that's all for today. We'll see you again. <laughs>